Hey everybody, it's Peggy Tianos. I'm here with my mother-in-law, Melinda Fichet. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so we're gonna answer some questions today. Um, I wanted to tell you some more questions I was getting from my fans and um, you've been so great answering them. So the question, uh, another question I was getting a lot, especially this time of year, is what is good for cold and flu prevention? Well, again, when we're looking at prevention, we're looking at staying healthy, staying hydrated, getting enough sleep, and maintaining your immune system. Anything that stresses you is stressing your immune system. So the key to that would be stress management, getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night, <laughs> eating healthy, avoiding toxic food, genetic modified food isn't good for you, um, you know, colloidal silver, which staying, I saw on my side. Again, you hear me say this a lot, but stay, uh, preventing your system from becoming too acidic. All your grains, all your proteins, all your starches and sugars are acid forming foods. And when your body is acidic, it's like conducive, it's like an incubator for growing pathogens. So, Think of a mosquito. You can't have a problem with mosquitoes if you don't have still water. They breed in still water. If you have a fountain in that water or you have a running brook, mosquitoes don't breed there. It's the same with your body. If your body is too acidic, you're gonna grow yeast, you're gonna grow bacteria, you're gonna grow uh, viruses, and your body becomes literally an incubator, an ideal terrain or environment for growing those pathogens. So you hear me say it all the time, drink lemon water, drink vitamin C water, eat your vegetables. If you don't like vegetables, get vegetable broth and even cook your rice and your noodles in vegetable broth so you're getting those minerals. I've been Take, doing that with the girls when I cook their yeah. noodles. It's so much easier. Now as far as supplements and stuff though, like I sell the um, colloidal silver on my site and that's great, um, obviously not too much of it. Um, and then we have immune support on my site. But are there other things that you suggest? Um, I know I've taken oxycilium. I yeah, think I'm pronouncing it wrong, but oxycilium. Yeah. Um, it's a other. homeopathic, very good. Um, well, some things that are good for bacterial infections would be colloidal silver, olive leaf extract, I love olive leaf echinacea, extract. golden seal. Some things that are good for viruses, oregano oil. There's just nothing better than oregano good old oregano like you cook with, but the oil is very potent. But it and doesn't taste good No, because <laughs> I have it. it could, but we could actually rub it on you our could, skin. But it's very, it can be caustic. You might have to put it in a carrier oil because it could burn, but you can put it in one of those uh, atomizers and mist the room with it and inhale it. It's great. You know, the other thing that I do a lot of, and I'm very careful when I say this because I don't want to sound like I'm prescribing anything or that I'm telling you to do something. Um, that would not be okay because you are not my clients. But for myself and for my clients, I keep liquid vitamin D, I keep powdered vitamin C, and you could use emergency. I use emergency. Um, and I keep liquid vitamin A. And at the first sign of a cold, three days, I take 50, 50, 50, and I'm not talking 50 milligrams, I'm talking about 50,000 milligrams for three days. The worst thing that will happen is you'll get diarrhea, unless you have a very toxic liver, which is very rare, but boy, that'll flush anything out really fast, and that's what most of my clients do. I have a great powdered vitamin C that's so easy to take, I can take 10,000 units in a glass of water and not even taste it. And I had to look for things like that because I work with a lot of autistic kids. So that's what I do. Great. Um, what about uh, eczema? A lot of people have written in about eczema. Well, eczema is a tough one. Eczema is usually an allergy. And it's important to understand that you have excretory organs. Those are your bowels or your colon, your bladder and your urinary tract, your lungs, and of course, the pores on your skin. And if you're blocked up anywhere, constipated, or you're not drinking a lot of water and your urine is very concentrated and dark in color, or you're a smoker, or you have had asthma and you don't deep breathe, then your skin is gonna take over for your detox organs. And it's gonna detoxify you. 
And a lot of eczema, they've done a lot of research, is allergy related, a toxic liver, and a lack of essential fatty acids. So what can people take or you know, what kind of creams can they use? What's best for it? Well, I'll tell you what I recommend to my clients, but you know, everybody does, I like body food. If you can't put it in your mouth, it shouldn't go on your skin because everything that touches your skin goes directly into your bloodstream, bloodstream yeah. does not get denatured or broken down by your digestive tract, and it's more toxic to you than what you put in your mouth. So, so I use coconut oil, oil, coconut oil, olive oil, I use um, uh, evening primrose oil, and I dilute that into my olive oil because it's really good for eczema. Um, but that's what I do. I recommend, you know, I'm very, I'm all natural girls. <laughs> if I can't eat it, I can't use it. No, it's a good, good way to be. All right. Well, next, uh, until next time. Thank you.